Why are Royal Enfield motorcycles up to three times more expensive overseas than they are in India? Kuna. So let's go into this Royal Enfield store showroom behind me and I'm gonna ask them exactly that question. Ram Ram Chris, Kay Hal Chal. Ram Ram. I'm good, good. How are good, you? Good. good to meet you, buddy. Yeah, good to see you again. Welcome to the store. Thanks. Welcome back. Check out the store, guys. It looks just like India, it's beautiful and it just feels like Royal Enfield keeps these stores. They have the same feel across the world, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this is the world store concept, so they're trying to have a uniform sort of look everywhere they go. Wow, I feel like I'm in Delhi when I walk into the store. I think Royal Enfield should be really proud about what they've accomplished outside of India because they're bringing a bit of India into New Zealand and into every corner of the world. So there's a big price difference between the Royal Enfield, the Indian models of the bikes, and these models we have here, which I'm assuming are the same. Where did all these extra costs come from? Yeah, so I get a lot of people mentioning that. When they come in, they're quite surprised that these ones are about three times the amount. Yeah, roughly, yeah. There are quite a few things different with these bikes. One being the materials that they use, there's obviously different grades. Mm -hmm. um, they have to use one of the highest that they have when exporting to New Zealand, Australia. So we're gonna look at this swing arm, see this tubular frame here? Yeah. That is basically what every bike used to have, especially in India, um, yeah. even the first few ones in New Zealand, but now they've upgraded to, I don't know if you're gonna be able to fit in here. If you can look at that side, you'll see a box style swing arm. Uh, you'll see this difference here. This is a much more contemporary swing arm. Yeah. Improves the handling, a little bit lighter. So that's another one. And then you'll see obviously foot pegs are different. They've got new fuel caps, just little tiny things that they've improved. So in New Zealand, a lot of these were coming loose and they go this way and then they'd make that sound as you, as you rode. It was a bit of a buzzing sound, so yeah. now they've got a flat screw top. Just looks a lot better and it avoids that problem. The other big thing is really fuel emissions. Really? So in New Zealand, we run by Euro 4. It's a pretty strict uh, fuel emission standard. In India, they don't. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice in these exhausts here, they're big and they're fat, because yep. they've got these big catalytic converters in them, yep. which actually muffles the sound quite a bit as well. Yep. So you'll find people who buy these bikes in this country, they actually take that cat converter off first thing they do. Because they want that sound, uh, that distinguished beat that they hear from the Indian domestic models. Yeah. And you don't get it as much with the catalytic converter in it. Let's see how different they sound. The thump is just a little less. Just a little, just yeah. a little. You might not even notice it. I think if you if you weren't listening for it. Yeah, well, it will be interesting because half my customers from India, that's the first thing they'll say. Really? They'll say, oh, it's quieter. Uh, the other half won't even mention it, so yeah. I wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't have told me. You should see the difference when they put on the aftermarket pipes. All they have to do is just put on a pipe that's basically hollow. Yeah. And the sound is just three times louder. I hear these bikes have a, a side stand sensor. Yes. Yeah, they do. They don't got that in India. No, that's, uh, that's New Zealand regulations again. They don't want you riding off with the side stand down, basically. There's quite a few differences there then. And I also read that the paint job is different. It's uh, just a higher quality finish with multiple layers of paint. Do we also get exclusive colors overseas as well? It seems like we've got all the colors that the domestic market has. I don't yeah. think we've got any that they don't, except for the army colors. Can we get the army colors here in New we, Zealand? We sell the army colors here, and, and that's one of our best sellers. You don't have to work for the army to get it? No. A lot of people who come in from India, yeah. when they see either the, the Desert Storm or the Battle Green, they flip out. They want that. Oh yeah. So the warranty on these, I understand, has gone up to two years from one year as well. Not a lot of motorcycles have a two year warranty, right? No, the big ones do. The big ones do, BMW, okay. Triumph, uh, all the tried and true kind of brands. Okay, so Royal Enfield's up there with them now in terms Royal of warranty. Royal Enfield wants to be part of the, uh, the top bracket of motorcycle brands. Cool, good on them. So Royal Enfield sold outside of India. They're not just domestic kit sets shipped over. They have a lot of modifications made to them to become road legal here in countries like New Zealand. And there's also shipping, there's taxes, and all these modifications. So all this adds up to a more expensive and better quality bike that you're getting here. One more bit of trivia is that Sikhs in New Zealand can ride without a helmet. They're the only people in New Zealand who have an exemption because they need to wear their turban. But they can only ride up to 50 kilometers an hour. 
So they can just ride around the town and people actually call the police on them because they're not wearing helmets. It's so funny. 